Uh, we will talk politics in a bit, but there is a big story that I saw that we should know about, and I wanted to know how depressed we should be on a scale of 1 to 10. The headline is, Court Rejects Key Lawsuit Against the California High-Speed Rail. Our buddy Stuart Flashman, uh, who is an attorney, environmental land use attorney and elections law attorney, was spearheading the lawsuit, and I, it broke my heart when I saw it. Stuart, how are you? Well, I could be better. <laughs> what, what, I, first off, as a layman, I don't understand it. And may I just, may I, before you go into what's happening and, and what will happen next, if you do bullet points on why this thing should be stopped, we didn't approve the cost, so the cost is way off. Yep. There's no funding plan. L.A. to San Francisco, in our bond measure, had to be met. They had to, they had to be able to do that leg in two hours and 40 minutes. Yep. Then we read statistics from experts who said, well, it looks like it's going to be three hours. Yep. Because you can't go at a peak of 220 miles an hour because it's unsafe in San Francisco. So they wanted to average 198 miles an hour. They won't be able to do that. So now it went from the bond issue of two hours and 40 minutes to three hours and 40 minutes. And who knows if it's, if it's even more. Uh, mm -hmm. Experts have said the ridership numbers are going to be 30% lower than at, than, than at least. And then the big thing was, ooh, let's reduce greenhouse gases. I looked that part up. The cost that they usually associate with reducing greenhouse gases are $20 to $50 per ton. They're saying this thing will cost $1,800 a ton. So here we are in, in, in a state that has huge deficits, huge debt, and we're going forward with this, and we haven't even addressed the tunneling and the issues and the earthquake faults that they've got to do, and the, yep. the Angeles yep. National Forest, and the fact that I don't believe they can do I don't. I don't even think they know what they're addressing. They don't think they know what they're addressing, so they moved the first leg to start further north rather than come into Burbank. Knowing all of that, Stuart, how can, how can we lose? It seems like there's so many points stacked against them where they, they lied during the bond issue or misrepresented. Well, they did. I mean, well, I wouldn't say they, they lied during the bond measure. They lied afterwards. Mm. Um, in other words, okay. um, and I, I honestly believe that one could build a high-speed rail system that would fully comply with all the requirements in Prop 1A and, and could actually make money. And, and in fact, um, the French rail system came in to the high-speed rail authority about 10 years ago and said, hey, We'd like to build a high-speed rail system here in California. If, if you'll talk to us about it, we can design a system that will make money for you and for us, and uh, it'll be good for everybody. They turned them down. Flat. Because? Because they had already made a bunch of political promises, and the system that the French wanted to build wouldn't have met those political promises. They had promised a bunch of... of of big deal makers in Sacramento and elsewhere, big landowners that had a lot of money at stake in terms of having the high-speed rail project go through their area so that they could build out their land and have it and be able to advertise, hey, you know, buy your lot here and you'll have access to the high-speed rail. Right. So they had made those decisions, and um, and they felt it was more important to protect those political decisions Great. than to build a proper system. So now we got. Something that's supposed to be the fastest train of any in the world, which they're yeah. probably, which is on blended rail. Okay, what? Ha tell me about the judge's ruling. And do we have? Is this over? Is high speed rail just? It's in our future, no matter what the cost at so, this point. So let me tell you about this, the judge's ruling. And and it was a narrow ruling, but I, I have to say I I believe, although you know he's a pretty good judge, I think this ruling was a mistake. But I can understand why he made it. Um, what he did was he started off by the question as to what's this bond measure about. And our position was this bond measure, and we had lang this language in the bond measure that supports this, that basically this is about promising the voters what kind of high-speed rail system is going to be built. Right. And, and, and we said that doesn't matter what source of funds you use. This is about the system, not just about the bonds. The attorney general argued, no, 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 this ballot measure was just about the bonds, and it doesn't have anything to do with, with ex anything except what they use the bond money for. Wow. So, and he went with them. So once he did that, it, it undercut almost everything we were trying to do. Because he said, well, you know, um, if this is all about the bond measure, 
and all about the bonds rather, then then essentially none of this. And there's a technical term in in legal parlance called uh, ripeness. And it doesn't mean that it's like a, you know, that it's 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 soft and gooey. Um, what it means is it's ready to pick, or it's it's ready to take to court in this case. Yeah. And and he said, you know, they aren't u- using any bonds yet to build this project. They've they got their bond measure approved. They did a first funding plan, and and you can recall we went up to the court of appeal on that, and the court of appeal said, no, 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 this isn't ripe either. You have to wait until they do their second funding plan. You can't do anything about the first funding plan. It's only the second funding plan that's important. Well, they've never done a second funding plan. This was, what, almost three years ago uh, that they did their first funding plan, and they have never come back for a second funding plan because they can't. So are they running the – how much money have we spent already on this thing that's now three Somewhere years Somewhere over $1 billion. And where's most of that money gone? Well, um, a bunch of it's gone to consultants, and a bunch of it has gone to the the, uh, the construction contractors and to Caltrans um, for the various you know, preliminary work. And uh, and there's there's one bridge that they're building over the Fresno River that uh, where they've got the footings in, and, and uh, they, they, you can see nice pictures of what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. But but they're still working on it. So Stuart, um, where do we go here? Done, you know, basically they've done maybe a half a mile of construction. In, in all the, for a bill, we got a billion dollars out, and they've done a half mile of construction. How close are they to buying all the properties they need to buy? Oh, nowhere close. Nowhere close. They need something like a thousand properties just for the first uh, 26 miles, and I think they at this point they've I think they've gotten up to about 600 of them out of a thousand. So they're two thirds. This could be years and years and years. Stuart, well, is there I mean, a, as you know, they've they've just put off when it's going to open, saying no, 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 2022, no, not not going to be 2022, going to be 2025. They're just. And it's almost most like people are saying 2028 at the earliest. So it's almost like they're doing what they want. That they've misrepresented on everything. Is there an appeal? Can you appeal? Is there another legal we can recourse? appeal? This is going to be a, what's called a final judgment. And once you've got a final judgment, you can take an appeal. We got to think about that. And and let me tell you one other thing i said i can understand why kenny made this ruling and and i think when i think about it the reason why i made this ruling is because if there's an appeal where does it go it goes up to the third district court of appeal well we've already had this go up to the third district court of appeal and a, a panel of three justices uh that basically sided 100 percent with the authority on on the on the previous uh, case that we that went up to the court of appeal um this is going to go right back to those same three judges if we appeal it. So what and, do you do? And so, Kenny knew that. Uh, Kenny knew that if he had gone our way, it was also going to go right up to the Court of Appeal to those same three judges that went unanimously and, and very lopsidedly uh, in favor of the authority. So I can see in his mind him thinking, you know, I could find for the plaintiffs here, but if I find for the plaintiffs, I'm just going to get overturned by the Court of Appeal. Right. It would be useless. It would be a waste of my time to, to have done that and, and, and gotten everybody pissed at me when it's, all, it's going to get overturned anyhow if I go their way. So I'll go the easy way. I'll find for the defendants. And where, well, so what happens next? You will file, file an appeal. What are the, I mean, this is just. Well, that's, that's what we have to decide because if we file an appeal, it goes up to the Third District Court of Appeal to those same, same three justices who, who uh, decided so lopsidedly against us. And, you know, do we really believe they're going to switch around and say, oh, gosh, we found for the authority last It makes time. you, you know what, when, next time you go to the polls and you see a bond measure and you vote for something, and it has nothing in reality to do with what they're going to give you, doesn't it get the vote? This is part of Donald Trump. This is part of Bernie Sanders. This is part of the world we're living in where people don't trust politicians. Well, people don't right. trust and, it. And I, I have commented to a couple of the, the reporters that have asked me about this and says, you know, after this, it seems like before, you, when you go into the, poll, the, 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 the voting booth and, and are looking at these bond measures, you've got to have three justices beside you. And say, okay, before I vote on this, I want to know what you guys are going to do with it. Yeah, and are these numbers? Well, I'm not an expert in rail. It sounds like a great wow. We'll get jobs, and this yep. will be great for yep. the economy, and we can build it. And now we're years into it, and they don't know how to tunnel through. Ma- they don't know how to build it, and they're no, not going to give it. They, yeah. they put themselves in an impossible box. Exactly. I, I frankly think the people who are the most to blame for this is is not the judges. 
and not even the high speed rail authority. It's the legislature. Because they want it regardless. They're the ones, yep. they're the ones who, who, who put this on the ballot. They're the ones who wrote this measure. And they're the ones who keep on approving the money for it. They're the ones who have who've, who've decided to spend the cap and trade money on this. Um, and, you know, when, when in fact, you mentioned about the cost of this in terms of the cap and trade per dollar of, per, per uh, pound of or 1800 or a ton. 1800 a ton. It's even worse than that because they haven't even accounted for the millions of tons of concrete that are going to have to be used for this. So they and basically that's going to when, generate huge amounts of CO2. When you say they when you said they didn't lie in the ballot measure they lied after. I believe that they lied in the ballot measure because they knew they couldn't execute what it was they're asking for. They put it out to voters, they make it sound wonderful, they make it sound like we're going to have great jobs and we can get to San Francisco in this short time and it's going to be great for everybody involved and now you're finding out it's not going to be great for hardly anybody and they're already Twenty billion dollars over. Well, I, I, you may have some points there. I mean, I I've talked to some of the uh, legislators who were in the legislature. You know, some of the people, um, uh, Lowenthal, and uh, you know, a couple of the other folks that were that were writing this, and they they said, well, we put in a lot of of tough uh, things to to uh, to meet because we basically felt either you build a good thing or you don't build it. So they were expecting that this was going to either what they would that the high speed rail authority would come into a roadblock, and either they were going to come up with a way of doing things right, or they would stop. Yeah, and and again, it does come back to the outsiders being the ones that people are enamored with the Bernie Sanders, the Donald Trump, because business this is business as usual. We were That's sold right. we were sold a bill of goods. Stuart tried to tried to stop it, fighting a good fight. I hope it's not over, Stuart. Um, and by the way. I don't want to come off as like this cranky guy who hates high-speed rail. They promised us something that doesn't exist. You can't. It's a unicorn again. It doesn't exist. You want it. I'd love, yeah, I'd love to go to San Francisco in two hours and something minutes, but it's not going to happen. It's just not well, going to happen. It could. It could. It's just the darn political promises. Again, like you say, it's the status quo. It's, it's, it's the you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And, and you get these, these deals made behind the scenes, behind closed doors. That, that benefit special interests and don't benefit us Thank you. at all. Thank you. And, then, and, and, and if it wasn't for those deals, we could have gotten a good system. The French were willing to build a good system, and, if you, and, they, and they got turned down. And if you expand but that it's to... not over yet, because, because Judge Kenny, in spite of going their way, in spite of realizing, well, I, if I rule in the, in the plaintiff's favor, I'm just going to get overturned, he put in some language in the ruling that basically says, you know this system you're building right now? You're not using the bonds yet, so this it's not right for me to tell you whether this is conforming to, this, to the bond measure or not. But let me tell you, based on the evidence that I have before me right now, this will not conform to the bond measure. And if you try and use these bonds for this construction, you're going to be back here in court. All right. You're going to lose. Okay, so there's, uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Thanks for fighting the fight. Continue fighting the fight because... We don't even know the final number. I mean, six, sixty some yeah. billion. Can you imagine? We're paying our kids well, are paying our you know, kids. Well, let me let me tell you for your listeners, for your listeners who live down in the L.A. area, um, they've got legislators, they've got people that they vote for, maybe vote for, and and those folks, particularly the Democrats, are continuing to vote for this high speed rail project, continuing to give them money, and and uh, they should be called to account. So make some noise. They should be asked when they run for when they're running for election this fall. They should be asked, okay, what's your position on high-speed rail? Now that they've moved it up north and now that we're going to not get anything. <laughs> Isn't that they're just making that. A Every day I read another, another uh, change they're making in this so they can conform and not, not come to us and say it's going to cost billions more. Stuart, we've got to run. I'm brokenhearted. I'm sure you're much more brokenhearted. Um, I hope I hope this thing gets shut down before it ends up costing fifteen twenty billion dollars and we got nothing yeah, to show for it. Yeah, that's the sad it. thing. Is, is it'll get built and built and built and then they'll run out of money and it'll and they'll put up a, a tombstone and say good night. Yeah, isn't that scary? Stuart Flashman, attorney, environmental land use uh, and election laws, who's fighting for us with the high speed rail. If you want information, it's stuflash.tripod.com is the website. Uh, and the update is the court so far rejected a key lawsuit against the California high-speed rail system, which is a shame, but hopefully it's not over yet. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Take care. Talk Radio 790 KBC.